Royal Counters is an insane deck to be playing on the standard ladder. Just by using Picnic Ruiner alone, you can almost guarantee getting lethal, if not close to it, on a lot of turns. Pair this together with things like Monastery Swiss Bear and Cacophony Camp, you're going to be guaranteeing lethal in some very dangerous ways. Hey Dragonauts, Astros of Flame back here, tapping out to talk about Grill Counters from my friend Alokness. Before I tap out to tell you about the deck, I'm going to tell you to tap that subscribe button to stay updated on all the new standard brews coming out for Thunder Junction. We're only a week away, if that. So let's go into that. But wait, wait, there's more? That's right, new shirts, Into the AM shirts. Just like I'm tapping out on that sub button and everything, why not tap out on these sweet deals from Into the AM? You can get three packs and six packs of all their amazing graphic tees or basic tees. They have a rotating stock, so different shirts come in and you can always switch up your collection. So be sure to check out Into the AM. And with that, let's get check out Grill Counters. What makes this deck so explosive is the aggressive damage it can do in a single turn, just by way of continually pumping out spells on your creatures. The biggest one we want to take advantage of is Cacophony Scamp. When it deals damage to a player, you can sacrifice it because we want that second effect. When it dies, you can deal its power to any target. So make a huge Cacophony Scamp, attack in with it, get it to connect with your opponent, and suddenly you can sacrifice it for pretty much lethal. If your Cacophony Scamp isn't going to do it, we're also going to combine that with the next amazing card in this deck, Pitnik Ruiner. Ruiner on the sorcery side does let you get some plus one plus one counters worth, but what we love here is the 2 2 creature. When Picnic Ruiner attacks with a creature you control that has power 4 or greater, Picnic Ruiner is going to get double strike on time of turn. This will trigger on Picnic Ruiner itself. So, as long as you are combining cards such as your Monstrous Rage, your Audacity, your Giant Growth, pairing these all together to give your creatures trample, bigger effects, and stuff, well, your Picnic Grunner is going to take advantage of that double strike, and your Cacophony Scamp is going to grow if both of these are out. And of course, we can't forget about the Ancestral Anger. A stacking damage buff plus card draw. And in a deck that will probably play out its hand fairly fast, card draw is a necessary thing to have at certain points. Not in every card, but at certain degrees. Which is why we're also going to be running both Case of the Crimson Pulse and the Questing Druid. Questing Druid in this deck fulfills two roles, right? This is Impulse Draw. Uh, seek the beast you can exile two cards cast them until your next turn that turn as long as you've done it on your opponent's step and on the other side just play the questing druid out anytime you cast a spell that isn't green questing druid is going to grow in size with a plus one plus one counter which fits so nicely into this deck because we want things to grow tall and speaking of tall that's where our last creature comes in monastery swiss spear just a good staple prowess creature. It's already going to grow as you're powering up your other creatures, so tack in there and get some damage. Combining this all in, you have some very aggressive ways to finalize your opponent's life total and get them going down to zero. In the sideboard, we have a few other choices kind of getting in here. Witch Stalker Frenzy is great to bring in in your aggressive matchups so you can take down your opponent's creatures very easily as you're attacking in with a wide board, or they are as well. Burbrass Forge, fantastic for those control matchups that keep putting on additional pressure. Ivar stand great against control and mid range for protection. Also, secretly a win con with cacophony scamp sometimes. And the festivities fantastic when we're going up against Boros Convoke. Uh, unlicensed hearse for that lands deck is you know the lands are gonna get you. They're gonna be a pain and you don't want your opponent gaining life. So bring in the hearse to go ahead and stop that pithing needle. Great to target planeswalkers or even an aftermath analyst. Again, they can't sack it if they can't activate it. And dragonauts. This is Loch Ness's Grill Counters. Please enjoy the games. All right, we're going to grab the play here and looking at Kumano Phase of Kakadin into Scamp plus Ancestral Anger. I'm very happy to keep this hand, actually. I've actually seen the Questing Druid. Uh, that's a very nice impulse draw for us. So we can go like Mountain into uh, our Kumano Phase's Kakadin. We slow roll the aggressive start. Right, so we start with Kumano. We're not going with the haste attack right away. And we're gonna go ahead and play in our Thram portal. We're gonna choose red. We'll play in Cacophony Scamp and make it a 2 2. And we're gonna go past the turn. The access to the Thram portal in red gives us the variable mana for Ancestral Anger while also having a mana for other stuff. The length is great. Go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna ping myself a red here. Hit up the cacophony scamp. 
Not so excited to see that. And we'll attack him for five. Going to decline. I don't want to sack it. I'll pass the turn. And I'm going to hold up the mana for questing Druid to impulse draw two cards on the opponent's end step. Sentinel's going to come on in. They got a 3-4 blocker. That's fine. Go ahead and impulse draw here. And wow, the flood out is so real right now. My goodness. I'm just going to go ahead and play the questing druid here. We'll do Ancestral Anger on our Cacophony Scamp. And then poking for four with the Scamp. Now the Sentinel dies here, gets exiled. This lets us blast the opponent before putting them to 12. And I can play in the Cacophony Scamp here. Buffing up the questing druid. Where'd the flame be, Gogo? -Go? What's going on? How you doing? The flame will be here for match two of this game. The flame has not forgotten your redemption, my friend. Sorry about that. I realize you redeemed it, and I did uh, kind of miss it at the part. So I will get it on this game two here. The flame be back, Gogo, though. I was busy with travel and work and everything else. So we are back. We are streaming. We have stuff going on. Now, the flame going into game two here has to consider that the opponent is playing a Sultai Slogar type of shenanigans list which means the flame wants to go strong and fast and not stop for anything at all. To that effect, what does the flame really need? Damage. And that's why the Urbrass Forge is going to come in against the opponent. We're going to cut a case of Crimson Pulse, bring in Triple Forge, and actually cut down one land so we can go hard and fast against the opponent, crushing their hopes that the flame loves and the flame is already looking strong with a swift spear and audacity ready to get swift and in going flame has a picnic crooner ready for round two in turn two and even stronger damage and in that lethal look and you can see the flame is prepped and ready for these plays. Finishing the game. Flame will not hesitate to just play in the runer because the opponent is tapped out and crack in for the damage. Mm, the flame cares not for a sentinel of the nameless city. No, the flame is simply going to Odessatai. And as you watch with the prowess trigger, the flame is going to get double strike and damage rolling in, ending the opponent's career. Pushing the damage down as the sentinel goes out, letting the flame draw a card. It's the turn. The flame is equipped with questing druids and impulse draws, ready in for turn four. The damage real, the damage fast. What will the opponent do? The flame wonders. The flame sees an invasion of Amonkhet and is not concerned for the opponent. No, the flame is fine to see it happen, discarding a single uh, Boseju, actually. The flame discards a Boseju, unconcerned. Getting in an impulse draw. Going then for the Monastery Swift Spear. Into the Monstrous Rage on the Ruiner. Attacking in for near lethal damage. And then playing in the Cacophony Scamp to seal the opponent's fate taking the game. But we've got the Ruiner and Audacity and a Question Druid and a Monstrous Rage. Go Calper? I don't think it's Calper, but Calper is around here somewhere. Uh, might be lurking. I think I'm going to keep it. I'm just going to pop this out on turn two. Because then I have like a Dazzling Monstrous Rage to just make it gigantic. And we can like Grand Portal in for red. Oh no, it's a Blood Tithe Harvester. Yo, yo, how am I going to handle that, actually? Um, 
I actually have to think about this. Am I going Questing Druid at the moment? I may just be going for the Questing Druid. Because if I play a Ruiner, the Blood Tithe Harvester just killed my Ruiner, and then I have nothing. But there's a better chance that they don't use the Harvester to clear the Druid. Or they have a second Blood Tithe Harvester. That's unfortunate. No blocks. On the list of things I did not expect today. Yeah, we'll just do this in. Funnel in the audacity. I'm going for a monstrous rage here. Crack them down to 10. Now this should force a Blood Tithe Harvester to remove it. Which leaves a Pictic Gruner open to be played. And then will allow me to Impulse Draw on the Question Druid in the next turn. And Agatha Soul Call. Okay. And then Harvester removes one. Yeah. Cauldron's awkward, though, because they can just eat their Blood Tithe Harvester and then suddenly all the creatures have the Blood Tithe. Oh, no, you eat the question. All right. All right. Oh, that's fine. I don't have any way for lethal this turn, so I think this is going to be me still playing in the Picnic Ruiner. And then I hold up the Questing Druid. Yeah, I hold up Questing Druid to Impulse Draw. Because this is a very real threat for the opponent. I'm going to have to block the Tomb Raider, though. Because otherwise I die. And that's bad. Like, that's really bad. Cauldron eats the Harvester, Tomb Raider's 3-3, three, three. triggers a trade. I had like something else to get Double Strike. Or if I had a way to get Double Strike, it'd be nice, but yeah, we just kind of accept it. Uh, Epicure, sure, go to two. That means my Thramborg can kill me. I don't really think I have a choice. I have to do the draw, so I go to one, so I cannot use the Thram Portal at all. Ooh, yeah, that's not a... Those Exiles were not what we're looking for there. We're gonna run in and against Mardu Artifact Aggro. Hmm. I think your Poison can be quite good. All right, we can get rid of the Cauldron. I could also grab Pithing Needle and Main Cauldron. Hey, what's going on, Goblin Mo? How you doing tonight? Welcome in. It goes well, my friend. How are you doing? It's good to see ya. Some two Tyvar stand. Probably are gonna be handy as well. I think we're cutting pace in this game. Maybe go down to like three Gruids, three Giant Growth, and. Three Monstrous Rage to bring in Tyvar Stand, Pick, and Pithing Needle. So we can name Agatha Soul Calder and stop it. Tyvar Stand can protect and give Hexproof. Picker Poison is just a good removal. This boy has no gun. I mean, I guess. Diamond 3 right now. Oh, Mono White Humans. Interesting. That's pretty cool, though. My hand hurts. This entire hand just hurts me. Well, I'll just name Red and start the damage, anyways. Uh, am I doing Picnic Runner? Picnic Runner on turn two? I think so. Like, attack with the Swiss Spear, Carpusian Forest. Set up for a lethal next turn. Blood 
Death Harvester. Yeah, I think we just win. I've done this before combat. Because I want the double strike. Collapses. Gogo, who are you referring to? <laughs> I don't know what that is in reference for. Rage. The flame, of course. I mean, I guess. Okay, well, there's game two. So we get a, a quick comeback, which is good. Going in for game three. I'm still on the play. Maybe I'm not concerned with pick your poison, actually. I have the pithy meal. You know what? Yeah, I don't actually think I'm going to be concerned with paper poison. I think I'm just going to bring back those in and we'll just try to go for a quick thing. We are on the draw now, though. So that does place us at a slight disadvantage being on the draw, but we can still make a combat. If the curve still works out like that, we'll be in a nice spot. Like, this is actually pretty good. Come on, on a runner into Ruiner with Audacity is nice. I'm only getting down to six. And concede. Ooh. Um. Yeah, but actually, though. Not one to try to keep. I mean, one, sometimes I keep all maters, but. This is very questionable. But it can work out in so many ways so well. I risked the hand because of what it can accomplish. Trying to find some work and doing okay? Better than nothing. Hey, I'm sure things are going better than nothing, though. That's the big thing. Uh, well, you know, uh, scamp it up, I guess. I'm glad you well. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. I, I'm feeling, I've am i been feeling pretty good. <gasps> so when it glyphed. Oh, no, that's dangerous. Uh, yeah, I'll take the five. Wait, there's a land. Um, very cool. Very cool indeed. Am I just going like Swifty in here, and then we punch in like this? And then I monstrous rage. Exile that. I'm going to go ahead and sack this scamp here, actually. And I'm going to bop them down to six. Siren's fine. Zoetic can't attack, so that's fine. We go down to six here. Perplusion's pretty nice, so I can just go Ancestral... Oh, hold on. Want this Ancestral Anger. I want this Ancestral Anger. And then I'm going to attack in. And then I'm going to hope and pray that this works out. I don't think this works out, actually. I think I messed up. Nope, it's Xaxes. I counted right. Let's go. Yeah. Chat, I can map. I feel like I should give Grill Picks a try and standard. Yeah, honestly, Grill's in a really sweet spot. There are a few really cool different variants you can run with it of like aggro and haste, along with the counters deck that we're doing right now. This is a slightly different variant on counters. I'm playing a little bit more mana uh, and running in case of the Crimson Pulse with some different sideboard options, but overall, it's it's been working pretty good. Let's like, is it treasures or is it artifacts with Zoetic Glyph? Um, I think her poison's pretty useful here. I don't think I need to be worried about anything else. I think this is going to be pick your poison. 
I can run out of stuff, so I want to keep in the case. I'm going to cut down one growth and one rage. And we'll run that in because we're going to be on the draw this time. Love that. Uh, don't love this. There's no creature. If, like one of these was a creature. I would have been like A plus. Uh, we're mulliganing. Yeah, this is uh, this is doable. Um, I'm not going to ditch the Kumano. We have the case, so we can actually get some card draw rolling. Pirate, Spyglass, Siren is all in the way. Red land's really good. Many orangutans and girl egg right now. Oh, the orangutan. What card's the orangutan, sir? I'm, like, very curious. Oh, are they gonna... Hmm. Getting a land. I'm actually really okay with that. Uh, Grand Portal I need to play now so we don't miss out on mana. We'll tap it for red. And we'll get a 3-3 picnic right here. Nice. So that means I can't be played with fire and die, which is good. It also does let me do Ancestral Anger next turn. Ooh, pick your poison. Useful. And I can't do anything with it just yet. Go ahead and do Ancestral Anger, target the pick and Groner. See if there's a removal in hand that the opponent has that we can draw out here. Ooh, ooh, it's nice. All right, uh, we can just attack in. Get them to strike. Three mana, two, two. Enters, destroys an artifact. Oh! Okay, did not know that was a card, actually. Ah, uh, Torch the Tower. It only hits for two, though. So we're getting a two for one removal here from the opponent. We lose it, but we take out the side. We lose Ruiner, but Torch the Tower, um, that's a two for one. I'll take that. But because all the opponent has still is red mana. Another pick your poison. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, well, I guess at this point, I am doing this in the case. So I trigger Prowess. We'll get rid of Boseju. And we'll attack for four. So if they do happen to get out an artifact, like the diamond pickaxe. Oh my gosh, is this actually panning out? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, so we do questing druid. We do pick your poison, force the sacrifice at an artifact, which gets rid of the diamond pickaxe. And then we do ancestral line. And we bought them down to eight. I defeated the diamond pickaxe. What you thought was indestructible was not unsacrificable. Well, Dragonauts, that is Gruel Counters. Thanks to Loch Ness for this deck. Please remember to tap that subscribe button to stay updated on all the new lists coming out for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. And as always, keep believing. I'll catch you next time.